You're listening to the Black Eagles podcast with Sinan Schwarting and Khan Bayazit. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 48 of the Black Eagles podcast. I am your host, Sinan Sporting, live from New York City. And with me today is Khan Bayazid, everyone, from Belgium. How you doing, man? <laughs> let's, let's shake things up. Are those the haters? Are those the haters? Are they finally here? Um, uh. I haven't. I have. I can't say that I have gotten a lot of hate on uh, anything that I've said on the podcast so no, far. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think I've I've handled a couple haters on on the uh, like Pectamec. I made fun of Pectamec, and and uh, I, I got some pushback on that. I think, and I think there was. I think maybe early on when we really? were talking about Shen Ogunesh, some people were you know naturally kind of coming to his defense, but not. Too Although I, I do have to say that I think recently, you know, the the, the not I wouldn't say terrible, you know, apart from the Malmo game, it's been mediocre but not terrible. There was like a little spell there where it was absolutely abysmal, uh, and I definitely think that 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 channel had a huge part in that. But I, I do think that recently in in most recent games, it's it's. Yeah, there's some some stuff he does he could have done differently, but I think he's being severely limited by injuries, by uh, circumstances, um, and all that kind of stuff, which I'm sure we're gonna delve more into today. Uh, it's good that we're recording this the day after, because uh, in the meantime, some news broke as well. Yeah, uh, a lot of that we'll, news actually. We'll talk about after the match review, I guess. But there's just quite a bit to talk about today. Is, so, uh, so dude, yeah, break us into it. it. Let's hear what we have to. To remind us of what happened yesterday, for the, for our viewers who either didn't get to see the match or, you know, who need who need it refreshed in their memory. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, well, let's uh, let's let's indeed uh, refer back to what we're coming off from. Uh, Besiktas drew nil nil last week, as you all know, and um, in the league against uh, Alanya Spor on the road, which kind of put uh, a little bit of a. Mm, kind of hit a snag in the road there, I, I guess you could yeah. say. And then, of course, on Thursday, damper, the, the damper on yeah, the, and on Thursday, the the Malmo debacle, which I'm gonna call yeah. it from now henceforth. Um, but then on uh, Saturday, Galatasaray and Basakshir played each other, who are, mm, you know, Basakshir is the, the the favorite for the title right now, given their their lead at the top of the table. Uh, but Galatasaray is our main competitor, I would suggest, even though Kasim Pasha are, were above them, but they lost this weekend. Um, but Galatasaray would be our main competitor at the moment for second place, although several other clubs are sneaking up, and, and, and at the minute uh, there's a lot of um, clubs sharing the points. But on Saturday, um, Basak Shahir and Galatasaray played to a 1-1 draw, which was ideal for us. We could come back with a win against Trabzonspor and once again come within six points from leaders um, Basak Shahir. So our mission statement was quite clear this past Sunday against Trabzonspor, but they were in a similar position because we were both on 25 points. And for Trabzonspor, winning would also mean that they would come within six points of the leaders. So um, a very important game for both teams. And um, I think the match started off pretty well. Uh, both teams played uh, attacking football, wanted the score, I think you could say early on. I think both teams had opportunities to do so, to open the scoring. Um, I thought that Urjan, especially in the second half, but in the first half as well, played a really good game. It's a young goalkeeper for Trabzonspor after one of Kivra got dropped from the team. Um, <clears throat> but it was... Yeah, yeah, he got dropped. 
he got dropped a couple of weeks back. Uh, Burak as well. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of players. Yeah, I knew about Burak. Uh, I thought, you know, he'd... Uh, yeah. Wasn't there a financial thing there, even? Yeah, you know, they're kind of going... I think you could say similar situations. Um, but, yeah, there was, there was a... a, a we had a decent spell of pressure, uh, like a 5-10 minute spell there where we were really piling on the pressure and we were looking like we were going to score. Um, I think that was like midway through the first half, but it was actually Trabzonspor who would end up scoring right at the death of uh, the, 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 the first half, uh, the first minute of stoppage time. Um, uh, we there, It was a cross from the right and Gary Medell, who was actually playing center back yesterday, yep. Um, which we'd asked he for. <laughs> went, yeah, which we asked for, but you know, his his one weakness as a center back, his lack of height, cost us yeah. dearly because he was unable to intercept the cross, which allowed Rodallega to round the goalkeeper uh, to receive the ball, round Carius, and score right before half time. And that was, um, I wouldn't say it was necessarily deserved. I think that Trabzonspor played well in the first half, but I think we did have or had our moments too. I didn't think that one team was necessarily better than the other, um, but it wasn't all that surprising that there was a goal, uh, and that was the halftime scoreline. Uh, nil one to Trabzonspor, who were the visitors, of course. So then at halftime, there were immediate uh, substitutions made by uh, Shinol Gunesh. He took Najib off for Gukan Gunul. Najib, who was playing right back, Dorokhan was playing center midfield, which we had also asked for. And I for. should actually add uh, real quick that yeah. on the goal where, yes, Medel was basically too short <laughs> to defend. Uh, also, mm-hmm. to be fair to him, he was the man between uh, essentially the, 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 the guy passing the ball and the guy who was to receive it. And I actually think that mm-hmm. might have been Nejip's man. And I think Nejip was just 20 yards behind. And, and I hadn't thought of it really I, I you know we we like to pick on Najib but he was quite slow in that scenario at least maybe getting back maybe it was a slow reaction uh, I don't know if he's physically slow but anyway we'll talk about all that later I just wanted to make a little asterisk yep. on that oh he said it right <laughs> I love you yeah I always do it I, always, I you know <laughs> Insight, insight, insight uh, thing there. Uh, I, I've, I've been getting very annoyed recently by Americans that fail to properly pronounce uh, etc. Because they say ex- etc. Yeah. I don't know why. Etc. Yeah. It's also I, expresso. I was watching expresso. a video the other day on YouTube and there was this guy who literally, I think he, he said etc. like 10 times in a 10 minute video. And you know, I, I don't mind it if you say it once and you get it wrong, but if you say it ten times and you're trying to sound smart and then pre- you say it wrong, I'm like, oh my god, stop doing that. I, I was so close to <laughs> writing a comment on, on <laughs> this video. <laughs> but but say I, just, it right. I just thought to myself, no, don't do it. <laughs> so that's a, no, no, so that's a little mean... insight to the ty- kind of uh, ant that I am. Um, but back to the subject. <laughs> but also to my correct usage. Let's let's, let's focus on the yeah. positives here. But no, uh, actually, back to the subject um, at hand. So uh, Najib came yeah. off at halftime for Gukan Gunul and uh, Quaresma came off for Janer. And that was a, a yeah. substitution that uh, a lot of people were criticizing, it, I think, around that time. But I have to say that we were, we, we, you really know, Janer actually played a really good second half, so it, it panned out well. But then, just two minutes after halftime, Trabzonspor basically doubled their lead. Um, it was uh, Noakwame, Anthony Noakwame, who scored um, in the 47th minute from the edge of the box. Uh, I don't know what our defense was doing there. Like, it was, a, you know, and, and people immediately started, you know, pointing at, at Karius, but... Because he should have, he should have had that. He should have had that. But he was at full stretch. He was, he was marking his. He was, he did what he had to do because he was marking the short. He was covering the short corner because uh, Nakwame came from the left. So it, it, obviously, he's going to cover his his right side, carries his right side. So you know, to that's the, the left corner for Nakwame. He's going to cover that. So. Yeah, he couldn't reach it when he shot towards the, the upper right corner, so carries his left side. He was at full stretch, couldn't reach it. The main issue there, and we've, we've said this before... I was about know, to say, right? Center, the center of the uh, midfield, right? You know, Give just so the pressure speed. on the ball, allowing him time to pick that shot, 
Okay, this wasn't this wasn't as bad, I think, as the um, the Sarsborg one was. The, yeah, what's his name? The kids go. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, I mean, still, <laughs> the wonder so goal. So forty-seven yeah. minutes into the game, two minutes after after the first half, uh, after uh, second half kicks off, and it's it's two nil, and you start thinking, oh god, it's gonna be another one of those days. But um, we pulled one back pretty quickly in the fifty-seventh minute. Uh, Dorokan Tukus got on the score sheet, and. Uh, just closed the gap to just one goal, and Bishtesh really went out on on the offensive at that point, and, and really piled on the pressure. And Trabzonspor, you know, they were cracking, and Bishtesh got the equalizer. I think around the 65th minute, it was like a couple minutes mm-hmm. after Dorokan's first goal, he scored again. It was a, oh yeah, the uh, the foe a really a really yeah. good goal from Dorokan, but um. But unfortunately Beautiful. for the kid, who I thought played a really good game again, it got... He earned his place on the score yeah, sheet. It got it. ruled offside by VAR, and, you know, it was a correct decision. There was somebody, like, a couple of inches offside, I think it was Jermaine Lenz, on the attack. Um, and he, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch it properly again. Uh, but he was involved in place, uh, someone told me, so then it's a correct decision. The only thing I, I struggle with there, because you know I'm a big fan of VAR, and I think it's great that we have it now, because we've been discussing this lately with our friends as well, that Turkish referees have, the, the officiating in the league has, has drastically improved since VAR got implemented, just because that you, you see that the refs are far more confident, I think, and they know that if they make a mistake, it's you know, it's not yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, they're they're not on edge as much as they used to be. Um, and, and I think VAR is great, but the thing here, the problem here, wasn't so much that the goal got this loud, but the, the, the amount of time it took f- to make the decision, yeah. and that really took the wind out of our sails because we had all the momentum, we were pushing them back, they were they were cracking, uh, we were playing really well at that point, I thought, and we got that equalizer, and I, I'm you know, okay, it's offside, but. Let's say if that would have stood, I, I'm, 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 I'm sure we would have won this game. And even if they oh, would yeah. have disallowed it, like, within 30, 30 seconds, seconds yeah, it's 45 fine, we'll seconds, it. maybe a minute, I think then, then still the momentum of the game wouldn't have died down as much. But I think that it took, oh, like, I don't know, like three or four minutes or something for them to make a decision. Yeah. And you could even see yeah. the players start putting their heads in their hands and like bending yeah. over like because you i think if you look up at the replay long enough you can probably see fine lens was off sides Ugh, like it's such a silly mm-hmm. technicality and i think that's why it took so much time because i think they were looking at the play mm-hmm. and then at some point in that process they're like oh oh whoa, whoa 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 rewind a little bit more look 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 you know and so that whole thing then yeah then they're looking but, at but another then the question moment. is then the question, and this is something I, because I didn't really properly look back at it, if if Lens is offside but not really involved, then it shouldn't matter, and that it feels like they're just looking for something to disallow the goal, but I don't know if that's the case, so I, I don't want No, in this case, no, he was, he was involved in the build-up, but again, like, yeah. for me, it's just... Then, then it's the right decision. Yeah, it, it adds another com- another wrinkle, you know? It, it, one thing about VAR, I think, that we, we've learned this year is that, like, it's a great concept and it's actually a great system even as is because as i think it's worked like, it's already improved refereeing so much but at the same time it could be tweaked i think there could yeah. be maybe like an impartial yeah uh, you it, haven't yeah. even reached the end of the match yet but at the very end of the match there was a call that like we may have even earned a penalty mm-hmm. <clears throat> in extra time yeah, you know yeah i know the one the one that they decided to give yeah, hands I'll let for, you... for pectimic but yeah, yeah. I'll let you do the yeah. Finish let's it up let's and continue. Then we'll get to that. Um, yeah. So you know, at that point after the, this loud goal, it really took the wind out of our sails, and it really took a while before we started uh, forming some pressure again. Um, and 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 really, at that point, a lot of, a lot of our friends were saying, "Well, you know, that's it. We lost the game there. That that was it. You know, I wish we wouldn't have scored yeah. that. Then at least, you know." Th- the momentum wouldn't have died as much and blah 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 but well we did actually still get the goal um mustafa pekteme came on in the 82nd minute for guven yalchin who I, I thought didn't have the best game yesterday uh yesterday i have to say um and, and and mustafa was actually the one getting on the score sheet in the sixth minute of seven added on 
and obviously seven were added on because of the long bar decision. And Trabzonspor was mm-hmm. wasting a lot of time already at that point. Um, Dude, and pathetically, there was one time where Toure just sat yeah. down, like literally just sat mm-hmm. down for four seconds. Everyone was yelling, and then he stood right back up as if nothing yeah. happened. There was no problem. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. really weird, honestly. It was. <laughs> and actually their keeper too never got yellow card oh yeah he was wasting a lot of time yeah. Um, but yeah in the so sixth was, minute of yeah, talking about a negative aspect of the refereeing by yeah. the way yeah, <laughs> but anyway I'm going to get back to that in a, in a little bit uh, but in the sixth minute of stoppage yeah. time corner from Janner I think I think Janner took the corner or was it Leitch I'm not 100% sure um, but um, the ball kind of ended up in a sort of a carambol situation Urujan missed the, the cross and then um, Mustafa headed it home uh, and 2-2 in the 6 minutes of at a time. And then we still pushed for the third, actually, and uh, got a free kick yeah. in the final seconds. Uh, and on that free kick was this position that uh, Sinan was referring to, where um, Mustafa kind of... You kinda, missed the Jan header kinda, that came up. Oh, yeah, we had a couple of more chances. Uh, but was that, that... I think the Jan header was before the equalizer. Was uh, it? I thought... Oh, you were yeah. right. I yeah, thought, yeah. No, I thought that was like... He a had, he, he, had I mean, he was very headers. effective. And yeah, yeah. This, he, this was worth noting, I guess, because that's like, yeah, another little highlight. He, he's been, he had he's one, been saying his name constantly in the match. He had before. one header that came off the bar, and then he had another header that uh, was really nicely saved by Urujan. And uh, Urujan made several really good saves in the mm-hmm. second half. Uh, so did Karius, by the way. Yeah. Um, but uh, there was his last position, basically, on the free kick, where Mustafa's control wasn't great. It kind of bounced off his foot, and it might have hit his hand. Uh, I only saw one replay, and in that replay, I really didn't have the impression it, it was his hand. hand. It wasn't a hand. Like they claimed it was more arm than, like, shoulder, but it, I don't Any, Anyway. A lot of me, shoulder. To me, it really didn't look like a hand at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then right after that, Vida basically gets kicked in the face, I think, and that should have been a penalty. Yeah. But then they decided to give hands. Uh, I don't think they looked at it through VAR, or did, did not, they? They did not. Um, but I think they should have looked at it because I, I I really don't think it was hands, and I think that could have easily been a penalty. But yeah. at the end of the day, uh, I remember saying, like in the third minute of stoppage time, I was like, we don't deserve to lose today. But neither did Trabzonspor, if I'm honest. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, they didn't deserve right. to lose this game either. They played a good game, um, and you know, their time wasting. I get that. I completely get that. We should, we you know we would do the same in their position. I don't um, think we do it as like that Toure <laughs> thing still. Yeah, and the keeper too. Because well, you know, yeah, the actually, weird thing is that I I can I feel like Carrios has gotten a few yellow cards in exactly I, I should, that scenario. I should. But, yeah, he has actually. Uh, I should actually say uh, I. What I should have said was more that um, we should do the same thing in the same situation, right, but yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Karius takes his time a little bit on goal kicks, but that's kind of normal. But we don't. We our players never go sit down and lay down and act like they're like they've been shot by a shotgun, and that's something we probably should have done a little bit more in some of those games this season where we gave away the lead in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe not anyway. as blatantly as Toure. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the full-time scoreline reads basically there's two troubles in Sport 2, and that brings both teams on 26 points uh, for their total, and that's basically sharing, uh, you know, I think Antalya Sport have 26 points, Kasim Pasha have 26 points, Galtzray have 26 yeah, points. So let's, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Officially, let's announce. We're looking at the standings now, and so at, at the we can officially, as one benefit of waiting a day to record, <clears throat> so we can officially wrap the whole thing up. Atop the standings is Bashak Shir, of course, on 34 points, a solid 8 points ahead of Besiktas, Trabzonspor, Galatasaray, Kasim Pasha, and Antalya Spor, who all have 26 points and then are in that order going down. Beneath second place, and you you mentioned this already, Khan, Yeni Malatya Spor, who has 28 points. So the good news there, I suppose, is that Besiktas and, you know, also four other teams are two points behind Yeni Malatya Spor in second place. So the Champions League spot is very much open for the grabbing. But the bad thing is that despite dropping two points this weekend, Besiktas did not gain any points on Besiktas here and are still eight points back. Uh, shall we look at the bottom of the table or, you know, is that worth worthwhile, Khan? Uh, there are two sides with 24 points, I should mention, actually, right behind that pack 
of 26 point teams or a Coney well, little, little, so little Coney correction Cibas. though Sinan we did actually gain a point on them because they lost last week and we got a point <laughs> no didn't but they they drew oh la, but no but she actually here drew Galatas today this week yeah 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 but I mean we this faced, week we could have gained two points yeah but we were nine points behind two weeks ago and now we're eight points behind okay. so we actually did no 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 but I meant on this uh, match oh, day okay. but yeah, yeah fair enough that's true in the big picture yes we have gained a point on but, them Missed opportunities, you know, I mean, Alanya away, that's a game we should have won. Uh, to You know, Trabzonspor, given the way the match went, okay, but I think we could have won that game, had we... But, you know, at the end of the day, you, you do notice that we lack quality. Um, but that's, so, that's something I want to come back to in a little bit. Yeah, and uh, before you do, let me uh, highlight, this is our weekly look at the bottom of the table, which uh, this season... We might have to do regularly because this this week match day this week's uh, match day this what you, these match days I don't even really call it but whatever this week's over and the bottom of the table is sort of set in concrete for at, at least another week. At the very bottom is Rizespor with twelve points. They actually managed a draw this week, so you know they're actually it, it looks like they're pulling it together a little bit. <clears throat> Fener second from bottom. Not even third from bottom. Second from bottom with 15 points. Uh, with <clears throat> Bayuksha here, Beledia, I mean, whatever. Erzidim Spore. Let's just call them Erzidim Spore for the ease of uh, commentary. But yeah, Erzidim Spore is above Fener, despite them being level on 15 points. They drew today 2-2. Two to two, And I might have you say a word about that, Khan, because I know you watched the match. Right above the fray, the relegation zone, is Akisar with a point. More at 16 points, and then Alanya Spor at 17. Those jerks, they're that poor, and they still managed to get a point against this. Okay, <laughs> I see you, Alanya. Still in effect. Yeah, yeah, and then you know, took over. Kaiseri yeah. and Guztepe are still kind of, um, you know, 18 and 19 points. They're still in trouble. Ankara Guju and Bursa are above them, and they look to be somewhat safe. But you know, they 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 should keep their eyes open. They're only five points out of the zone, so. Um, for for Besiktas fans, you know, even though we may be having a less than ideal season, we can look towards the bottom of the table and see clubs like Bursas for and Fener, uh, you know, that consider themselves rivals. Fener is, is a rival. I don't know. Bursas for or even Ankara Guju, they, they want to be rivals. I can't say they've earned it, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that I'm unhappy to see them struggling near the relegation zone <laughs> yeah we have to keep in mind like the difference right now between us and Fenerbahce is 11 points I think yeah um, th and that's from third place to 17th yeah I, you know it's in, a in, crazy in, year for Turkey remember in 2004 when we were in first and they were in second and the difference was 11 points mm. and we had 43 points and they had 32 points so but they had they had uh, a much easier time buying things at that stage of <laughs> for football history perhaps but let's let's not get too far into that uh but yeah but so that's it that that's where we are in the standings a lot to look ahead to in the last match day before the quote-unquote yeah. break there's not much of a break but and uh, our last match is against Kasim Pasha who right. for a long time were in second place but yep. in the last three games they only got one point as opposed to our four points so. we're still level on points with them on 26 but yeah. they're technically in the sixth slot right now um, so that'll be a difficult game for us next week uh, away. It's a traditionally a difficult game for us to begin with. Uh, mm -hmm. They are kind of our black sheep. Add to that that right now uh, Mbaya Diagne has scored 18 goals already in yeah. 16 games. Um, he he's solid. on fire. He looks solid. He's their top scorer in the league right now. Um, five of those goals have come off a penalty. Uh, two from a free kick, I believe, and 11 from open play. So... Uh, 18 goals in 16 games. I mean, you can't knock that. No way. Uh, he scored a bunch last season, too. I mean, if he keeps going like he's going right now, he could hit 30 goals this season for sure. And I think that will be the first time since Burak Yilmaz did it uh, for Trabzonspor uh, in 2011 or something. Or 12. I'm not Interesting. sure. Interesting. I wonder, you know, I, yeah, I've heard 12. you sort of make fun. public your concerns about how a lot of goal scorers out of Anadolu have flared up elsewhere and then come to a big side in Istanbul and, and you know you've cited Makukula mm -hmm. and uh, 
Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, I, I see a lot of people saying right now, like, oh, Bistesh or oh, Galtzray should really go for Mbaya Diagne, you know, purely based on the fact that he's scoring a lot of goals. Um, now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't if they could afford him, which well, I'm sure Kasim Pasha... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which I'm sure Kasim Pasha would want a ridiculous amount of money for him. Mm -hmm. But there is this... I mean, there is a very clear... Um, how should I put it? Uh... There's a history here with strikers from Anatolian teams becoming top scorer in the league and then moving forward to a big club and completely bombing, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll name a few. Zafar Biriol, I think he became top scorer twice at Konya Spor uh, yeah, with, 20, with like 25 one, yeah. Yeah, with like 25 goals or something. He went to Fenerbahce, didn't do anything. Serkan Aykut. Same thing at Samsung Spore. Oh, he scored a bunch. Deep. This is some, yeah. yeah. Like Second this. I could went Great to Gals, right? Didn't do anything. Uh, Okan Yilmaz, uh, I think he became top scorer once or twice for Bursa Spore. Uh, but he, I mean, he scored, he became top scorer once, but I think he scored like 20 plus goals for a couple seasons. Um, he never made a move to a big club, but, you know, he fizzled. Uh, Fatih Teke, of course. I mean, that's a bigger club, Trabzon Spore. Um, he had a great career, of course, uh, going to Russia and all that. So he's one that you can uh, consider. Shota Arvaladze is another one um, that, of course, had a great career after Trabzonspor. But that's Trabzon already. Yeah, then there's you're already Bur in that tier. Yeah, so so I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll scratch the Trabzon players, but I'll, I'll name a few names here. Serkan Aykut, Safer Biriol, Okan Gukan. Gukan Unal. No, Enaramo never scored that many goals. <laughs> I know, but, you know, enough to, to get us to buy <laughs> yeah. him somehow. Gukan Unal. Um, who else am I? Ariza Makukala. Uh, who else? Uh, oh, Fernandao, of course. Yeah. So there's, yeah, a, you know, I mean, there's there's just so many examples over the past 15, you know, 18 years of, of, of Anatolian players that became top scorer in the league and looked very impressive at their Anatolian clubs. And then when they moved to a bigger club, they either or either they didn't move to a bigger club because you know they you know the big clubs knew that it wasn't going to work out, or they did move and it it completely didn't you know the only player that moved from a big club and did decently, I guess you could say, is Fernando. And I mean, let's be honest, it's the the freshest one in in our memories, and and he wasn't all that good at Fenerbahce Matt to begin with. Down I mean, he, pretty quick. <laughs> he did okay, you know, but he scored you know mainly scored on penalties. So yeah. Well, so um, let me let me get this thing back on track, Khan. Um, yeah. Where are we? Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, my only point is just that we don't, don't need to don't, get too excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't yeah. overhype something. I mean, it's perfectly possible that if he goes to Bishes or Galtzar, he does great. Um, but there's a reason also why he's playing at Kasim Pasha at his age right now. Yeah, yeah, he's not that you know, young he's, too, right? He's, he's, he's not that old. He's like 27 or something, I think. He's not that old. Yeah, exactly. But not that young either, right? He's not... Uh, yeah. I mean, Ryan Babel ended up at like 27 at Kasim Pasha, and he's a good player, so... Yeah, but that definitely. was that era where, they, you know, they had a bunch of yeah. uh, ex special touch board members. Serdar Adali, I think, had, you know, uh, absconded. No, 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 not Adali. Who was but, it? Someone. Remember, there was a big no, name but, that had absconded over there and brought a bunch of fun. I think Mansimov was there, but he was never a board member for us. I thought there was someone who, like, had actually defected. Anyway, it, it's uh, water under the bridge. I don't even really... I don't have any hard feelings towards Kassim Pasha. I've told you I like their stadium. But anyway, <laughs> Saturday, December 22nd, it's on at 11 a.m., another brunch game for us New Yorkers or, or, or gringos. Uh, but so that means it's going to be 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. in Istanbul. I think 7 p.m. and then that means it's 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. It's 5 p.m. for you again, Khan. Yep. In uh, Western. Which is great. Europe. I love that. Yeah, before dinner. I, I'd imagine that's pretty good. I don't mind my it's brunch brunch ones either, you know, kind of. Of course, it's not it's so nice. It's for my sleeping pattern. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, like, uh, it's nice to, to wake up, have a leisurely breakfast that sort of moves into the match, and then uh, enjoy your coffee. Anyway, but yeah, so so look out for that. December 22nd. Now, let me, let me bring us back on track against Trabzon this weekend's match let's let's refocus ourselves and I'll do the stat flash and then that, that'll be a good segue into our analysis maybe Besiktas had more shots 
than their counterparts. Travis on 18 to 14. Shots on target, 8 to 7. But actually, for both sides, it's a lot of shots on target. So, you know, again, credit to both keepers. You've already mentioned that, Con. But that, you know, that shows you statistically they both did make a number of saves. Possession went 62% to Besiktas to Trebzon 38%. Makes sense. Trebzon is up by a goal or two for much of the match. So you'd expect Besiktas to be holding the ball and pushing forward. Passes 459 by Besiktas to 296, which again reflects the possession. <clears throat> Accuracy is positive. Besiktas finally uh, breached the 80% again. They're, they're at exactly 80% passing accuracy to Trebs on 66. That's one side of things that's been fairly consistent. The team is passing well, especially when Atiba is in the mix, I've noticed. And maybe we can talk about that in our analysis. Fouls 16 to 14. Uh, Besiktas committed 16. Yellow cards 3 to their 1. Offsides, two by Bechtaj, none by Trazon. Fairly disciplined game in that regard. Ten corners to their eight. Uh, again, just reflecting. I mean, you might expect more dominance in that regard since Bechtaj was pushing forward better. But again, Trazon was effective, um, especially in getting corners because they were playing on the counter, and I think that gave them a chance to bring the the rest of their team up and get a organized attack on goal, which has been a problem for Besiktas throughout the season so far, so it's not bad that, uh, for them to have tried that. I think that makes sense. But yeah, so the stats reflect, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything that these stats tell you that you wouldn't already kind of know. I mean, of course you see dominance statistically regard to going towards Besiktas, but that's very reflective of the fact that, you know, uh, Trabzon is holding a, a lead for much of the game. Uh, and, I, and for some of it, a pretty nice lead, a two-goal lead. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything too controversial here. I think the stats <clears throat> are a fairly good reflection of things. One thing that I want to, maybe I already mentioned, but then bring your attention to in our analysis is, again, the bump in passing accuracy that you often see when Ativa comes into the lineup. I wonder what you think about that and what we can do about that going forward when Atiba leaves. Do we need to find someone else who has that capability? Beyond that, also, I wanted to highlight the fact that indeed, Karius saved five shots. Uh, officially, you know, five shots on target. He may have even made some saves that were not counted as being on target or that were then flagged for upsides later or whatever the, whatever the fact may be. But yeah, Karius was actually pretty effective despite i'm sure what will be a torrent of criticism on twitter <laughs> as always <laughs> so that's yeah. it that's my stat flash con you know he, he had that one ball in the first half where he um went out yeah. by far out of his goal and he didn't win it mm -hmm. and then uh, it ended up against the bar and that kind of stuff if you do that in a game then Fans tend to gonna turn. start scru they start scrutinizing yeah. everything, and you know, frankly, I think people who are blaming him for the second goal, uh, it, it kind of shows uh, laziness. I think it's I think it's unfair if you're gonna blame him there. I think you could make an argument that he could have done. He made. He, I, I think you can definitely make the argument that he made the wrong decision on the first goal. Yeah, yeah. By, uh, uh, going going forward with his foot mm -hmm. instead of standing his ground. I think if he covered his corner, uh, if he you know if he just co covered his his the angle yeah. and, and closed down and, and, while they and got. And to be fair, it's it's it should never come to that, right? It, it's a one on one. It's yeah, like you yeah, decide I mean, this or that. He made the wrong decision, and and, and he, did, he made the wrong decision in a visibly kind of goofy way. <laughs> <laughs> it was a snap. It was a snap decision. He sees Medell missing the ball, exactly. and he kind of goes panic mode. And he, you know, he made the wrong call. I, I don't think he wasn't thinking yeah. uh, one hundred percent. I think if he more experienced, like for example, a guy like Buffon, there, I think knows probably that. dives okay, into the corner. Stand, yeah, exactly. Stand my stand my ground here. Cut, mark my corner, and what's he gonna do? Exactly. The only thing he can do is try to square it back. And have someone else tap it in, but then he needs to make the right pass mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Needs to have the the oversight and all that stuff. So, but I think you can 
say that he made the wrong call on the first goal, on the second goal. I don't really think you can fault him because he was covering his and angle. He's stretching at full uh, length, you know. What I mean, and he's at full stretch, you know. And and people would say probably, yeah, but he should have took, you know, he should have been a step more to to his left. But then he's leaving his he's leaving his, the other side his open, corner. Exactly. He's leaving that open, and that's the one he has to have. Mm-hmm. Um, so bad defense I think there that, for sure. I, I don't think you can blame him on the second goal. Uh, you can definitely make an argument that he could have done much better on the first one, but there's so much that went wrong there yeah, yeah. that you know you can't just put it on him. And I think again, uh, like I want, I want since now we're in in the analysis portion of our episode, I, I really do want to highlight the fact that I think that's Nejib's man, and I really think. He's just somehow very <laughs> slow to get back to him because Medell's in the be. middle. He's caught in no man's land to some extent. And yes, like if he is about a foot taller, <laughs> he probably does clear it anyway. But that then makes that for me a very solid defensive play by Medell, rather than you know I, what I mean to say is that I think Medell's covering for his man there, and so as much crap as he's getting for being short, oh it's yeah, not even entirely his responsibility, short, you know. <laughs> Right? You can't give. Yeah, I mean, you can't really fault him for being small. <laughs> he was just born that way. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's just the way it is. You know, that's that's nature. Um, and I, I didn't think Medel had a particularly good game. No, he didn't. Uh, yeah. but I, I and, don't and, think and he's been playing particularly season. well. Did you say season? He hasn't had a particularly oh. good season. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I haven't liked him this season. But I think that's also because he's being played in midfield far too often. And I do think if you play him at cent- central defense, he's going to perform better. You know, his best uh, match for us was as a left is... back. Do you remember that? No, I don't. He played left Which one back. Was that? Uh, you know, early on, remember when both Jenner and Adriano were injured? I can't remember. I think it was a European match. And I mm. was really nervous about it. And I remember can't even remember. saying in the episode, I have to give a shout out to, to Gary Medell because he was in. I had never seen anything like that, and I was very scared. He but the I get. Well. I remember when we got him from Inter. That uh, I think he went to a very similar um, career trajectory, so to speak, at Inter Milan. Where at first, you know, when he when they played him in midfield, they didn't really like him all that much. Then they moved him to central defense, and and they really grown. You know, there was really they grown to love him, the fans. But then I think that kind of slowly faded, and I think that's kind of what we're seeing here with Business as well, where. Initially, he was played a lot of central defense, and uh, I think he won, you know, just because of how determined he is and how uh, much grint that he shows on the pitch. Fans are obviously going to gravitate towards him, mm-hmm. but I think as a, you know, all in all, he isn't a. Gr- he's a good player. He's a hu- but he he's an engine. But there's he's a motor, player. right? That's why people love him. He shows heart all the time. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't call him an engine. It's not because he has a lot of stamina and works hard that he's an engine, so to speak. I think an engine is somebody who, like, like for example, Steven Gerrard, who can really take the team on his back um, from that deeper role in midfield. I wouldn't really label him as an engine necessarily. But the thing with him is I think he's just he's a limited player without Let me correct being, that. Yeah. Okay. I, you're 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 making the, um, the the metaphor I'm using way more artful than I intended. I don't mean that he's like the engine for the team. I guess what I mean to say is he has an engine, <laughs> right? He's one of those guys <laughs> whose engine is constantly think- revved up, and he's like flying around the pitch, I- oftentimes not in the smartest way. He's a qual. He's a quality version of Najib. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think you could say, like a Perfect. like a proper ver- like yeah, a maybe a, a foot shorter. Yeah, like a like an international level Najib, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that that's basically just somebody who works really hard. It's like Najib uh, if he'd improved over these last six years <laughs> and not just remained the same. Yeah, and if, if, yeah. I mean, whatever. That's harsh. And but... you know, I just I, I like I like Medel. I think there's a place for him in the team. Uh, not not necessarily always as a starter. He's a utility but I think guy. There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's a great great player to have on your squad. Um, but for me, he's not necessarily someone that in in the coming years should be a starter um, necessarily. Which I think is gonna be a problem for because him. he's yeah. gonna want to start uh, for sure. Well, so use this um, chance now, Khan, because it's a good segue. Same position, same part of the pitch. Um, I'd, I I I wanted. To hear your thoughts on it. What do you, what about Atiba? 
What do you think about this? I feel like it's a problem was... that Atiba is still so effective oh. for us because because of his oh, age. Oh, for sure. Because... I mean, we need a six. We need a successor for Atiba. Right? I don't. I don't think that Dogan is that type either. Yeah. But the thing is because that Miguel's not. You know. I, I, I thought Dorokan was, was one of our best players yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not just because he gets on the score sheet, but he is just so involved all the time. What's his position? And it's it's like I, it's like I told you, like I said a couple of weeks ago, like he he feels like a fish in the water yeah. wherever he is in on the pitch. He he doesn't look like I said like when you see Atiba in the final third of the pitch. He he feels yeah yeah he slows down and, yeah and he's like what am I doing here <laughs> he, you know yeah. he's like he's like a fish out of water when he's there and he doesn't really know what to do and he rarely makes the right decision you know like yesterday were a couple of moments where Atiba got the ball at the edge of the box and it's like, what? you know the, the com- and the commentators are like Atiba and you know then you expect like Something. oh he's gonna put the pa-, you know he's gonna find the pass but he he never does he he just you know okay he plays it safe he puts it it skits into slow mo and I always, I feel like you know, it's a cartoon that, that's, it's almost like a comic book you can see a box like oh well, you, know, <laughs> you know one of those top well, bubbles no I, I wouldn't say that I think Atiba is very I don't I don't think he becomes um, the, the difference is with many players like for example like a Najib I think he would panic and and shoot or make a wrong decision yeah I think what Atiba does and he knows he knows what he can do and he knows what he can't do and I think he's very self-aware I don't think he panics when he gets in that kind of yeah, position yeah. but I think he knows to give the ball to someone who is more um, like a fish in the water, I should sure. say. Like he's gonna, he's gonna try and find light. Yeah, he's no, gonna find and I didn't mean to find... see. Yeah, he's not, he's not like mm-hmm. um, out of his depth by any means. I just mean, I think he knows his own abilities. Yeah. He knows where limitations, his strengths yeah. lie, and yeah, he knows where his limitations are. And I think when, but he's in that scenario, he's, he's like, oh yeah. crap! Like this isn't exactly ideal for our team. But I, I, at yeah, the same yeah. time, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna. Try my best to get the ball to where it needs to be right now. He won't lose the ball, you know. Exactly. Najib is, gonna, or somebody else is gonna, or Medel if he gets in that position, he'll, you know, he'll probably like oh, make a rash decision, or fi- you know, fire a shot from an impossible an angle or something. Or... Is the type of thing that could make you gouge gout- your eyes out. <laughs> I just <laughs> because we've seen them and well, uh, yeah, we've never seen a couple one connect, weeks ago. Never. But, but do you remember some weeks ago when Pepe tried it? <laughs> yeah. And he was like just shooting from distance, and you're like, you've probably never scored yeah, from distance. Doing, Why do you just not pass it to someone else? You know. I mean, yeah, at least when the anyway, Adriano gets it to go, you you've seen it connect once or twice. Oh yeah. Right? With Adriano, <laughs> you know, like, you know, he, he might shoot ten times, and it may only you know hit the target twice. But when it does, it's he's sco- he scored a couple. Yeah. He scored a couple of screamers. So you know, when he tries it, it's it's okay. Wow. Um, but the, you know that. But to get back to Dorogan, I think he's. He has so much. He's not necessarily an amazing footballer, but he is very comfortable on the ball, and you can see it. He doesn't. He doesn't suddenly like get. He doesn't. He never. He never seems to get caught like a deer in the headlights. He always seems to be composed, mm-hmm. and that's what I really like about him. There. See, here's my thing um, with Durkan. He could be the next generation defensive midfielder if, and this is a big if. If we had a central midfielder, not a defensive midfielder, yeah. he who needs, had he needs some a of Atiba's ability, off. right? Some of Atiba's ability to hold the ball and, and mm-hmm. very efficiently distribute it. I mean, Atiba's ability to distribute the football, it's the kind of thing where, like, if he was playing for a, a club slightly bigger than Besiktas right now, I think history would remember him as being kind of historically efficient because he's, he's a very shrewd guy on the pitch. I I just wanted to make that point via today's stat flash and all that. But um, beyond that, you know, I, th- I think that's clearly a hole for this club going forward. And like you said, Dorokan is yeah. so effective wherever you put him. But he's not the – oh, there you got the ambulance. Welcome to New York, guys. I'm going to talk through it this time. Yeah, he's so effective um, in his ability to, to do whatever he wants to do, but he's not effective in his ability to hold the ball and kind of calmly and per, fine he's 22 also maybe that's something that comes mm-hmm. with uh experience and comfort within a, a unit and uh familiarity with all the guys around you and consistent playing time which is just starting to trickle in for him great but 
it can be said definitively because we don't know if he's going to become that guy. That's that's a level he has to reach, and we've seen guys mm-hmm. not reach that level. And this is the key point I'm going to mention, like Ozan, right? Ozan was at, he was there, and then he sort of uh, fumbled around fizzled. his ability and fizzled. Yeah, he he lost his confidence, whatever it is. And hopefully, we both hope I think that he can regain it and maybe become that guy. It's probably mm-hmm. not happening under Chanel Gunesh, and if we're not getting rid of Chanel Gunesh. Now, what are we going to hope, you know, after a year of inaction and inactivity and sort of, uh, sort of slumbering on the at bench, this point, that he's going to come yeah. back and become the guy we want? At this point, I am like 99% sure that this is his last season. I have a feeling. I mean, I, I think he's taking the, think the turkey job soon. And uh, I don't know if it's you know, I don't uh, know if it's gonna be in January or at the end of the season, and he's gonna combine the job with Bishop. Do you want to mention? Season. Should we jump into news? Um, because this is the news. You, you, there is a news well, item on this, right? He had a let's, meeting. Let's, with let's, let's, let's think for for a second. Is there anything else we need to mention about the match? Oh, okay. Just quick, the referee. Quick, I want to say. Up. Uh, I think he yeah, was. Uh, really good until around the, until he disallowed the goal and not because he disallowed the yeah. goal but i felt it, it threw but, him in, in yeah cluster, i felt right? that he got really an annoyed i don't know what it was with him he, 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 he felt like he get, kind of got bit in the ass after that and he started giving <laughs> yellow cards to our players yeah. uh you know quite yeah. quite easily and um i don't know he, he showed no empathy uh, after that, and I, I really thought that the last 20, 20 minutes or so from him were not that he was mm, not that yes, he made a lot of bad, bad decisions yeah. or anything, but he just I don't know. It may be, I, and I maybe it's because and it's really I really don't think it's because he disallowed the goal because I completely understand that, but I just felt like he kind of got that little Turkish referee disease where he got a little cocky and and maybe annoyed at some of our players because they were you know obviously frustrated. I think it was, yeah, it was exactly the, 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 the disallowed goal moment. And I think our players turned, not necessarily on him, but on the yeah the, the whole refereeing unit. Because it was like, come on, guys, like, fine, you're taking away our goal. But can't you at least take away our goal in a way that doesn't completely deflate us? And Because and, the, the team was moving I think the worst the part momentum. was that he didn't, that they, he didn't, he really took no action against the time-wasting. Uh, yeah, and exactly. that only and that was that's key. only gonna annoy you know our players in this in this situation yeah, more. It, it's uh, a mounting thing. Right? It's like I a mean, camel, it, the, the feather yeah, on the camel's Every back time that, that that Uruguayan went to take a goal kick, he he had to uh, you know get the grass off his studs and clap against the yeah, the exactly. bar. I mean, that's just you know. I mean, I get that. As I, I don't blame him, but also, I mean, the first like, I don't know if it was the first time, but one. You know, at, at one point he really took his sweet time, and I think then as a referee you just need to give that yellow stop. Exactly. And, that's, and that's what I saw with, with I remember against Bursaspor, Carriers did it twice and he got a yellow. And here, I mean, I feel like in, in every game where we've had a lead at the end, that's happened to Carriers. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're, they're so quick to yeah, give it to a side really, that they expect to mm-hmm. win. But yeah, uh, that's weird. that's still some one of those little inconsistencies from referees that I really don't like. I think it's I think they that, should yeah. definitely penalize. Um, but they need to be consistent about it, not just, I mean, like, like I said, against Bursa, exactly. I, Karius wasn't even really wasting all that much time and immediately gets booked, no. and here Urujan, it's not like... And let's not forget, that was also a match where he'd been pelted with things yeah. in a very sort of uncivil manner, yeah. too, so just, just, I felt like they were almost siding with the crowd when they were giving, you know what I mean, to the guy who's been harassed all match, who's not yeah. even being very egregious in it, and then in a match like yesterday where they don't give one at all, it just shows you the inconsistent in, inconsistent in that regard and i feel like all the refs need to get together talk about how they want to penalize guys wasting time and then just do that every match d- no matter what like they should have a counter and if the guy takes more than x amount of seconds whatever they decide I think, uh, is reasonable you, and with sosa he actually you know they had to get a stretcher to get him off the pitch um, and he was legitimately injured, but then he got on the stretcher, and then he got back off the stretcher while he was still on the pitch. To me, that's a yellow card. I don't care if you're injured or yeah, not, yeah. but that's that's wasting yeah. time, um, and that should that should be a fine for the me- the medical staff from Trabzonspor. It gave me a really bad taste in my mouth about Sosa too. After everything, yeah. too. whatever. All right, but so Khan, let me get this. Let's back get out. on the highlights and, and the lowlights. 
Okay. Yeah, tell me quickly, just to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Who's your highlight? Who's your low light? And I'll try to think of mine as you. Well, I'm I'm gonna leave a uh, door count for you. <laughs> okay, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go with Jenner. I think Jenner was uh, was great. Yeah. You know? And he he yeah. turned the game around. Um, he, I think he got, I think he got the assist on the the first goal, or at least it came from his cross indirectly. Um, and yeah, all this cross was And I think his corner, I think it was his corner that led to the 2-2 as yeah. well. I'm not sure if it was him or Lige, but he was just very involved. He, he really... Uh, yeah, and he probably won't get credited with the assist because it bounced Yeah, yeah, so I don't think he'll get either. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, he won't Just like Durakan earned a goal but didn't get one. Uh, well, didn't he get the first one or did that get ruled? No, it was goal. called the own uh, goal by Onazi. Uh, Stinks. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's really sour. Um, but yeah, for me, Jenner was uh, came off the bench and uh, showed uh, a lot of um, Grinta, which I keep. I, I, I hope you guys know what Grinta means. Uh, and now we do. <laughs> <laughs> Heart, I guess you could say. Yeah, um, cojones, whatever. But yeah. I, I, to me, the highlight is really the the fighting spirit that the team showed. I think coming back from a two nil, that's not something you do when you're on the ropes. And I think we're slowly climbing out of the out of the, out of the the pit we're in. Uh, it's gonna be too late to salvage this season, obviously. Um, but I think with these you know injections of, of youth a little bit from Dorokhan and, and even Guven, and hopefully uh, what we're gonna get back to later, maybe Orkan in the second half of the season, uh, maybe yeah. some new transfers. I think you know we could we could be in for a, 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 a much better second half of the season. Not saying. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying that we're gonna Big win the title. Many but... asterisks. Yeah. Well, so, all right, good. Uh, and I'm giving mine to Dorokan. I've we've already probably said enough about him. Yeah. You know, over the last few episodes, <laughs> even. So, who's your low leg? Um, hmm, it's difficult. Hmm, who is my low leg? Well. I was kind of underwhelmed with Guven, but I don't want to give him my low light. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was more him not being active enough, not doing there, anything actively there wasn't, wrong. There wasn't really a player that, that stood out to me that was particularly poor. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, abstain. Is that the right? Is that the right? Yeah, to, you, can, you can abstain or plead the fifth. You're pleading the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> cool these days. Yeah, I'm going to abstain um, from giving a, a low light. Okay, that's fair, and and we've already sort of minorly critiqued the play of uh, Nejip and uh, Medel, even to some extent. I'm gonna go ahead, and I think you may have slipped on this one. I have a feeling you're gonna agree with me wholeheartedly. I'm gonna give mine to Quaresma, <laughs> the two-footed stomping on uh, whoever that was. <laughs> but that was against Malmo. Yeah. <laughs> but um, after you do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't done, Con. Okay. <laughs> after you stomp on someone with two feet, you know, and you still manage Same to well get machine. placed in the starting lineup after that, uh. right, the next match, I would expect for you to want to do everything in your power to make things right with the fan base, with the coach who probably should have taken a harder stance on that, uh, with with a number of guys. I know we have a guy, Sally, in the group who <laughs> has decided that if, if Quaresma plays, he's going to root against us now because he's so mad about it. Nah, that's that's insanity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like you, Sally. You're growing on me, but come the, on, guys. The, Relax. The, 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 fir- the foremost important thing is getting the result, and I think exactly. that's given the injury and, and of Babo. injuries, maybe yeah. you play him. I'm not even critiquing playing him. My problem is with Quaresma himself. He should have scored a hat trick today. You know, in the first 20 minutes, he should have been so... I mean, of course, I'm joking or exaggerating, but he should have shown a lot more than he did. And remember, he's one of the guys who got taken out after the first half because he didn't show much of anything. I didn't think he was particularly bad, actually. No, he wasn't particularly bad. But that's what I mean. Like, from a guy like him, mm. who we've placed at the level of a club legend. And I'm not going to take that away from him because of one match. Or or because he jumped on a guy. I mean, he does stupid things. Like, that's him. We've known that's him for for so long that... that, Whatever. But I, I... What I have grown accustomed to is 
him being so hungry to not be a bad guy with our fan base and so hungry to right wrongs that he often performs very well. And, and, and actually, you know, Babel has stepped into that role a little bit where he'll get heat and then suddenly score a goal mm. and everyone's like, oh, I can't really talk smack today, you know, and, and I kind of enjoy that because you and I, we've, we've never been too hard on, on Babel for some of the silly things people get, get on him about. But Quaresma was, a, I think, a, st- a standard bear in that regard. People look for and, stuff uh, to hate on, on Babel, is what I think. It's fear. ridiculous. Like, this recent thing, there was someone talking about, like, oh, he was in a, a rap video. Like, literally, it's, and, and I have a little more background with, with the production end of things. That they may have filmed, and I would be willing to bet that they brought a camera to his house and he and his friends took 10 minutes to film. It's like a scene of them sitting around the couch, like, staring at the camera come on guys like he he's injured he's not playing he probably can't even train with the team right now and even if he was training and working his butt off i'm absolutely positive at the end of the day he could go home and film 10 minutes of footage with his friends and like come on we have time to tweet about this don't you have anything going on in your life guys come on <laughs> ridiculous it's uh, so whatever that, that's, that's anyway that's the social media age you know people exactly, yeah, get to complain about everything and it brings the worst out of like our fan base. It it, it, it lowers everything of that, whatever the experience. But um, yeah, Quaresma, I wanted to see. I wanted to see like a goal or one of those, at least one of those matches where he doesn't do so much but gets two assists because he just mm-hmm. has that passion to make something happen. You know what? I think uh, he was it, taken out. Maybe had he been let build. let on, maybe he could have had that. You know? I was just, yeah, like, like yeah, exactly. No. Um, but so, you know. I don't know if you blame Chanel Gunes for not giving him enough of an opportunity to make things right. No. But, you know, I don't think so. Because he, he really didn't do much. And, and I think all of us felt like we needed to make changes in the second half. I didn't even... I thought Lenz hadn't been playing yeah. um, particularly not good, well. Not a great game from Lenz, definitely. And Leitch wasn't particularly good either. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think when, when you see so many pieces out of whack... It's suggestive of something bigger than, you know, you, you, you don't, and I think that's probably why you don't want to pick on anyone for your low light. And that's yeah, why it, the player who I'm quote unquote picking on, again, right? Like, Quaresma didn't have a horrible match. I just wanted to see him come out with a kind of fire to make things right mm. that I didn't really feel I saw. But, you know, again, it's not, it's not a traditional low light. Quaresma did not, of course, some people are always going to hate everything he does because he's just one of those polarizing figures. But, I'm not going to go that far. I, I just, you know, I actually expect more of him. I, I want to see more captain-like behavior, and I want to see uh, passion, but not a big deal. The, the most important thing is just, I mean, he's an idiot, of course. Um, maybe it's starting to become time for us to part ways, but I don't want to I don't want to see him get shipped off in the winter just because some fans are... I'm happy, turning, yeah. turning against him a little bit because you know they're working out there first. I mean, I guess yeah. I mean, the red card against Malmo that's completely unacceptable. But is that a reason to, you know, uh, just you know tear up someone's contract? No, of course not. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you get a good offer in the winter, by all means, sell him. So, all right, Khan, this is great segue <laughs> here. News now. Speaking of offloading guys, uh, yeah. what? So, okay. First news story. Da-da-da-da. News news flash. Pepe's gone. Mm-hmm. And we've right? been talking about this for a couple of weeks, you know, because the rumors have been out there. You know, what's going on with Pepe? Is he injured? You know, the official story was injured, but kind of didn't feel None of right. Us believed it, yeah. right? We kind of knew something more was going on. We know the club's been struggling financially, um, you know, due to the fact that, of course, you know, they missed the Champions League. Uh, you know, the reason that we had to offload Negredo after this transfer window had already closed, that was also financial. We knew there were, were issues. We know that payments were getting were late for the players, all that kind of stuff. Um, and as it turns out, you know, uh, and, and I don't blame Pepe whatsoever. Uh, I just wish that he would have, you know, on one side, I get it. He, you know, he, he's, he's in a mindset of, well, you know, I've played my ma- last match for the team. I don't want to get injured in a match. I want to be able to sign with the club in January. But it's just it's it's a shame because he was I think he's been really good for the club um, the last one and a half years he had a great season last season in the Champions League he was instrumental Our historic there. Champions League run like if, yeah. if anyone's was, gonna take any pride in that then you have to at least 
Yeah, Bang, Pepe. This guy. Pepe was was great there, and I think I mean I think the fan base has really I I, I haven't seen anything negative about it, but I would have just liked to seen him play one last game and say goodbye to the fans. You know, yeah. you know that like last game against, like yesterday, like be able to maybe not play but at least come to the match and you know maybe before the game receive some flowers or something like that you know i think it's it's kind of he came in through the big door and he's leaving through the back door and that's that's kind of sad i don't blame the club either for letting him go because he is of course our, our top earner 4.75 million a year um that's a huge strain on our wage budget uh that you know that, that, is, that, that you could pay both Quaresma and babel an entire year for what you pay Pepe, you know. Uh, you could pay, you could pay Atiba, Dorukan, Guven, uh, <laughs> Karius. Uh, you know, that's four players. Uh, I think you can probably add another player to that list uh, an entire season for what you pay Pepe. So I completely understand it. I mean, this season is kind of lost for us yeah. anyway. So it doesn't make sense for keeping him around for six more months. Um, you know, and and having to pay his full contract. I'm sure that this early um, mutual termination has a financial benefit for us for us he probably you know for, for when some of his owed wages or something like that that's usually how these things go um, but yeah he's gone it's, it's been confirmed officially today also to the to the stock exchange uh, on the the club has thanked him for his services um, it's official he's gone I think I kind of hope he's gonna end up signing with Porto uh, this January, but well, we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, but yeah, that's that's are a they massive through boost. in the Champions League? Uh, yes, they are. They they won their group. They were yeah, in the group of belts, right? Yeah, I would. It would be give give, give me some of the root for. In They're the playing League, Roma. Yeah. They're playing Roma. I think. Ooh, that's tough. I kind of like Roma. Last sixteen, yeah. Tough. Um, but so that's that's news item number one. News mm-hmm. item number two. Let's see. Where should I go with this? All right, let's stick with players. Ryan Babel. As of mm-hmm. today, supposedly meeting with management, mm-hmm. and they're talking extension. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Um, it's... I don't see how it could be a negative. Let's let's, I, not, mm, let's not give these people what I, they want. I think, <laughs> well, first and foremost, I don't think he should get a raise. That's no. out of the question. Oh, I mean, but he given, knows. We know he knows. Right? Remember his videos. Yes, but that doesn't mean he's not. That doesn't mean he's not asking for more money. You sure, know, he sure. knows. It's but good. yeah, yeah. I think if you can extend for him with one season and one season extension, maybe an optional second season um, for the same wage, I think that's okay. And let's let's just say something. If he if he extends with us on the same wage. He's literally giving us an opportunity to try to make some money off of it. Yeah, that's my. So yeah. all of the people who want to give him smack, you know, who want to, I'm I'm trying so hard not to curse, uh, who who want to trash talk Ryan Babel, if if that occurs, I I will I will require written apologies from <laughs> each one of you because you've made his life hell for a year now for for uh, since the summer. Non-stop. Yeah, so. Everything the man does. Like if he goes to the store to buy ramen noodles, he's gonna get someone criticizing his choice in noodles. Like to buy this, what? Rum r- and noodles? Ramen, ramen noodles. You know, like the instant noodles. Oh, ramen. I thought you said the rum and noodles. You no, know, like, ramen, whoop. ramen, ramen. I don't know that. I don't know what that is. Yo, you don't know? It's like those Japanese noodles, like the the instant. We have aiki. Interesting. I bet that's a company that makes ramen. But anyway, yeah. The point being. <laughs> It's like a soup, you know, those instant noodles you put in water. Whatever. Point being, no matter what <laughs> Ryan Babel does, he's going to get criticism Great from like, episode. a huge segment from millions of people on Twitter. Uh, and he's the type of guy, uh, you know, partially I think he's trying to be younger than he actually is in years, but he's he's very active on social media. Take it or leave it. That's just what he wants to do with his life. So the result is... These people have been torturing him nonstop about every, like his, the color of his hair. Your hair is red. That's flamingo red. Guys, there's we wear a red shirt this year. Shut up. <laughs> God, I hate this. That segment of our fans is making me so angry. But anyway, okay. Uh, Babel, maybe extending. Uh, and yeah, for me, it's only positive in that, yes, of course, we don't want to spend more money on him. But if we can extend him for the amount we're paying him now, 
it's just giving us an opportunity to make some money off him. And it's already obvious that other clubs have circled around looking at him. So we should be able to actually make some money on this guy, which looking at Pepe is a pretty big deal. Not a bad. So thank you well, if that's the case, Bob. Well, Anything I just else? want to make, make – I think it's very important that this is the last round of negotiations before January – because in January he's free to start negotiating with whoever on yeah. you know sign on a Bosman. I think it's important that if he does not extend, then we sell him in January. Yeah, if we can. And, and you know even if it's for like peanuts, like like one and a half million, two million, the doesn't matter. Year, sell yeah. him, get rid exactly. of him, offload that wage, and offload and get a little bit of money in. So and I think that's, that's what I'm, they're hopefully that's yeah. what they're gonna do if they can't extend with him. And, and I'm hopeful of if, the Fiorentina rumor because like that's the type of club where they're I could probably see him go back fighting. Then. For, you know, a club like that, of that stature, where they're fighting for their position in Italy, maybe they're trying to fight for a spot in the Europa League. I actually have no idea where Fiorentina is right now. But, you know, that's the kind of profile that you'd hope might be circling for a guy like Babel at this stage in his career and who might be willing to spend maybe $2 million to get where they're trying to go with this season and knowing that a guy like Babel could help them get there. So, yeah, that's I, I think either way it's positive, whether we sign him and, and we can make money off him like actual money or we s don't sign him but we know where we stand with him and so this brings in news that Fiorentina are intent by the way and yeah, they yeah. are just a few they are just two points off from uh Europa League spot so there you go perfect example um but so and this brings up news item number three mm -hmm. and I think this ties into the news of Babel but maybe not even because if you look where we've been lately we've yeah. been playing mustafa pektamek on the wing yeah. Yeah. we've been you know we've been we've john air was actually very effective but he, he was on the wing yesterday but the i i think this is great news actually apparently we are recalling you know we're canceling the loan and recalling orkan china mm -hmm. thoughts i think it's great um, I think that's the type of stuff you need to do. I think recalling loans is uh, something you, uh, that's a right you have, uh, unless unless the club pays his wages, uh, the club who's loaning him, uh, then I believe, then you forego that right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but of course, I mean, Orkan's been playing in the second division this season for yeah, Adana yeah. Dimitspor, and I believe he's been doing quite good. Yeah. Um, Especially, he's score, been scoring some nice goals uh, in recent weeks. Uh, but the thing is, I think it's great that we recall him because, like you said, we've been forced to play Mustafa there. Uh, Gokhan Ture clearly not back at his former form. He's in the last six months of his contract, so it's very unlikely. You know, it's very, it's it's very likely that we might not be extending with him, or at least not for the same conditions that he currently has a contract for, which he may not be willing to extend at all. Then, yeah. Uh, if there's any kind of read between the lines story. Yeah, maybe it's that. I think it, finally, I they've think seen it, enough of Gokhan Tore where they're like, "This guy's not even." I think it it, it definitely has choice. major implications. the The question is, which implications does it have? Does it mean that, you know, I think that Tora being on his way out isn't uh, you, wouldn't be a huge surprise, but it could also imply Quaresma leaving. It could imply Babel is not extending or is unwilling to extend or not willing to accept the offer that we're giving him, whatever. Um, it could have m many implications. It definitely, it, it definitely, um, there will be some repercussions. In, well, no, it's not the right word, but it'll definitely have some stuff following it later on. But I think it's great. Um, I think I'll Orkan is... For someone. But that's a position no. that's been problematic. And like the, the three pillars we have in terms of, you know, I'm just going to remove Gokhan Tode immediately. But the three guys we have, Jeremy Lenz, Quaresma, and Ryan Babel, are all talented. But A, you need a fourth, and Gokhan Tode is not able. Yeah, and all three of them are, are 30 years exactly. and older. Quaresma is 35. Babel is going on 33. Mm -hmm. um, Lenz is going on 31. Yeah. Uh, no, he is 31. I think, he is oh, no, 31. He's, I think he's Ryan Babel is 32, but he's going to yeah. be 30. Yeah. I, think, I think Lenz... He's from 87, so he's 31. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, all these guys are in their 30s. Orkan is, what, 22? Yeah. Like, I think he's the same age as Dorkan is. Uh, we've seen small glimpses of what oh, Dorkan... Oh, by the way, Ryan Babel's 31. Okay. So, Babel's I mean... from 86, though, right? Yeah, um, I think he's turning 32 real soon. But... Uh, 
<laughs> whatever. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he's 32 already. No, I but just whatever. checked Wikipedia. And Orkan is... Is he from 92? 92? You were right about that. He's from okay. Dortmund. I didn't so think he was from Dortmund. So he's from 1996? Right? Oh, 19... I already... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I literally just from like, get the age and I'm already moving so, on. Anyway, yeah, he's, he's young. Um, oh, he's by the like, way, by the way, uh, here's the confusion. Ryan Babel is 31, but he's turning 32 on December 19th. So literally two days from from when we're recording. <laughs> he's going to be 32 any minute now. Okay, okay. Um, so, I mean, I think we've seen glimpses of what Orkan's capable of. I mean, remember that game against Leipzig where we played a bunch of a bunch of reserves basically where you know instead of Jenk Negredo started instead of Quaresma Lenz started and and Orkan started and all that kind of stuff and he had a great game yeah. and he got he had the assist for the winner mm-hmm. uh, the winning goal and he didn't start I think he came in as a sub but anyway he had a, he had a good he had a good um, good showing there and he's not a, a particularly flashy winger he's not a Quaresma he's not uh, you know Weird. that type of that, you know not a good cantore but he has quality to him um, whether he's good enough to be a Bestes player you know let's let's see this is the perfect opportunity yeah. for him look at how Dorokhan rose to the occasion and grabbed I have a good feeling I really chance. do I don't know why I, I've seen flashes that made me th- anyway yeah I don't want you said enough. He was great. Orkan was great at Gaziantep Spore. Yeah. Um, Every stop you know, he's so. made on loan. Anyway, but so, okay. Wrapping things up then. We have one final bit of news, and then I think we got to wrap things up for good. But the last bit is kind of wrapping up if it pans out long term. You know, and I think it is more long term than short. But uh, our coach, and I mentioned this very briefly earlier, Shanol Gunesh met with Yildirim Demirodin and the speculation, and it is just that, we can't get too excited, but the speculation is that they are discussing the position with the national team. And if you think about it, there's really not much else for those two to discuss. Uh, you know, Yildirim is going to tell him about how, how much you ruined our club. Like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Besides the national team, I don't think there's a lot they'd want to be talking about. So, uh, mm. what do you think, Khan? Is there is there truth to these rumors? Um, I think he's. Binder, a, or are you selling it? Yeah, I think I think he I think that's in, I think it's inevitable at this point that he's going to be the next Turkey coach. I think that lucescu has been a disappointment, and the, um, the Nations League failure is probably weighing in on this decision, if there is one. You know. He's been a disappointment. Um, a year and a half. Not not entirely through his own fault, I think. But he's 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 not, you know, he's kind of he hasn't delivered on the expectations, or how should I put it? Um, I don't think there's any other logical um, candidate. I mean, the other logical candidates would be Aykut Kocaman, but he just took his job back at at, at Konyaspor. I don't think he's going to be leaving that job. Um, the other logical option. Yeah, the other logical option would be Abdullah Avci, but I, I don't think he's going to go back to the Turkey t- job anytime soon. I think he wants to uh, continue coaching uh, at club level. Especially this year, right? He's Yeah, Fatih Terim is definitely not going to go back to the national team I mean, after the way he, to, he left. To, to reiterate, yeah, that's not even... But to reiterate about Abdullah Avci, which I think in many cases, for many people, would be the first choice. The issue here is you have to consider, A, he's with a club that's really, you have to consider them poised to win the Turkish Super League. A shoe win almost, no yeah. way he leaves mid-season now. He wants that, you know, if, if they yeah, win a course. title and he leaves before, like, he wants that feather on his cap. Uh, but then even beyond that... You could have combined the job, of course, but I, I, I just don't, don't think that he's going to... Yeah, and I don't... With, with the state of the Turkish national team, I don't think that they'd want to settle on that kind of scenario. And then the, the other thing is that I don't see him leaving next season, because if they do win the title, which is like, I don't know the odds, but I'd say it's probably like 50-something percent at this stage. If they, 60? Yeah, probably even, but yeah. Uh, but so if they do win, then of course he's going to want to stick around and see what he can do in the Champions League. Um and, and then awesome. maybe even following up what he can do in the Super League, having one title. Think, so I don't think that's. I think you're I think right. For I Avci, think it might be likely. mission complete if they win the league. I think it might be mission complete for him, and I think that might for him. I don't think that he. I don't think that he's particularly waiting to play the Champions League next season. I think for him, if they win the league title, that's mission complete. 
Um, it's a big thing. I mean, and here's the difference, yeah. right? If if Avji leaves after a title, he probably gets signed in the next year or two by Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, maybe Bezik. Oh, if, if he leaves, he's he's definitely going to one of the big three. I think that's. But you if know. he if he finds even a modicum of success in the Champions League, his career like blossoms in theory, right? Maybe he could even. Yeah. I mean, who knows where he goes from there? But you have to keep in mind, you know, they're going to be in the fourth pot. Oh, uh, I don't think they, they blossom. No, I, they I, are, but I just mean, if he's the kind of guy who really wants to take a risk, you know, because that's a big risk-reward move. And it's not even a big I, I, r- risk move. It's more a reward move because nobody expects anything from them. So it's like... Yeah, but the thing is that if he wins the title with Bashak Shahir, look, they're not, they're not going to be... A, they're, they're, they're never going to be a dynasty. If they win the title, that's probably going to be a one-off thing. Um, although they've been pretty, you know, consistent in the last few years. And but the economy they, is not helping us. They're, they're not building. They're not building a dynasty. I don't think so. Over there, if they win the title, that's what. What else can he do? What else can he achieve there? Like I said, I think it's going to be mission complete for him. But I don't think that he's going to go back to the Turkish national team. I think for him, his next step is one of the big three jobs. Yeah. I mean, that's the most um, and, likely move. And probably, probably, most most likely, Besiktas or Galatasaray. Why not? Um, I just don't think that, that it might happen, but I, I think that they'll probably stick with Jan for at least, un- unless... That's true. You know, it's like we talked about unless, the risk of us signing him, with, or, or letting go of Chanel earlier. We'd, we'd be stuck with Ersun Jan, and then we have to give him another year <laughs> after this season, because, you, you know, he came in... <laughs> I think they're not gonna. I don't think they're gonna, unless of course Yano can turn things around and and keep stuff just keeps going downhill for them. But I think he'll. I don't think that he'll turn things around massively, but I think he'll obviously get them out of the bottom three and, you know, hopefully for them. <laughs> uh, or, or but, and, and but the thing is for for Galtzray, I think that the the, the Fati Terum this. What is it? The fourth stint, fourth Fatih Terum era at Galatasaray. I think it's coming to a close. Oh yeah, I, I was gonna and say. I think, think Galatasaray is the the most likely one here. I mean, if they if they don't win the title this year, which seems highly unlikely now, I, I and also the, given the the polarization with the, the the war with the TFF that he's had recently, I think this is gonna be the end for him again at at Galatasaray. I'm not saying he's not gonna come back for another stint, but I think this stint is gonna draw to a close. And I think the same thing goes for Shinon Ganesh. So I think it's more likely that Abdullah Avci is a Besiktas or Galatasaray coach uh, in the next two years. I hope it's Galatasaray. Um, I want someone more. But more yeah. Well, you know, let's wait and see. Um, but but back to, back on topic for Chanel Gunesh, I think this is going to be his last season with us regardless. Yeah. Uh, now the question is whether he leaves in January or he leaves at the end of the season. I'm leaning towards end of the season, yeah. but I wouldn't be surprised if he took the Turkey job already mm. and just combines the two for six months. Uh... And then, but I, 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 you know, honestly, if I was Oman, I wouldn't accept that. No. I mean... If you were shooing for the title and everything was all, you know, rainbows and roses and whatever, then I would say, ah, oh, you know, go ahead. Whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, but given the position we're in, I think we need our coach 100% focused on the team. So I'm not 100% sure if Orman would go for it. It might actually even be a cheap way out mm-hmm. and a kind of a way out to save face a little bit for mm-hmm. both of them. Um, and then and, and he would maybe uh, the club wouldn't have to pay Gunesh any compensation if he leaves for the national team now. So I think that's the ideal s- scenario. Yeah. But then the question is, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna give Guti the caretaker job for six months and then in in, in, in the summer perhaps go for Abdullah Avci, which I know a lot of our fans would want. <laughs> Uh, I know that you and I perhaps have some different feelings about that, which we can discuss as well. But um, I'm looking at this week because I think <laughs> we're going on well, pretty long here. But yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's definitely we could probably do a whole a couple episode of... on that. In fact, <laughs> yeah. in fact, well, I would even you... suggest we get a round table. Maybe we curate yeah, our guests. Great idea. You know, hopefully we but can, we can find do that a in bunch in... of people who have different. Yeah, for sure. In January, wants, I think yeah. we could definitely do that. I, I know there's a lot of people. I, I think Aaron really mm-hmm. wants He's keen to on some see changes, yeah. Abdullah Avci. I, I, you know, the thing is, for me, I'm not opposed to it. 
I wouldn't say no, but it's not my first choice. It's not forward thinking enough for me. I, I, it's like a, it's a safe uh-huh. it's a safe choice in a way. You know, well, you know, given the position we're in right now and his ability to organize the team defensively, and, the and given the fact how poor we have well. been this season defensively on set pieces and all that, I would definitely not say no to that. But I, I, I you know, just the Bashakir's failures in Europe the past couple of years. Um, the fact that he's never coached a big team and never he has he has never had fan pressure. Yeah, never. Exactly. You know he had it at Tur- for the Turkish national team, and I, you know that was definitely wasn't the only reason he failed there. But I think he kind of got an unfair situation there. But I have my doubts about Afci's ability to, and not because I know he won't be able to, but just because of the fact that he's never had that. He's still very much a, a virgin, so to speak. Yeah. You know, Shinel you know? Ganesh might be the ideal choice for this national team, if you think about it, right? Because he could really quickly install a system that these guys yeah. who have some semblance of playing together. I, I think that the, 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 the quality, there's definitely lots of young quality for the national team, but... Uh, there's missing puzzle pieces. Oh, always, yeah. Well, that's what I mean, though. For I sure. think that's where Schnell Ganesh... Yeah. Yeah, you know, with, with, anyway, with his um, attacking yeah. mentality. Um, anyway, what, yeah, let's, not, let's, not, let's not dwell. Take us out, so, Tom. We've, we've, we've really... Uh, we've covered the gamut of, think, of uh, topics yeah. this week. Well, a quick sum up. I think there's three major uh, scenarios with the coaching situation that could come out, you know, that could work out. Uh, one is that uh, Schnell Ganesh just stays until the end of the season yeah. and then takes a turkey job. I think that's the most uh, likely, if we're being honest. And then option B is that he takes a turkey job and stays until the end of the season. And option C is that he takes a turkey job and leaves and that we get somebody else for the remaining six months of the season. I think those are the three big options. And, of course, uh, yeah, I think those are the three major options. So, um Nothing really left to talk about. I think it's just now we have the Kasim Pasha game this weekend. Hopefully yeah. we get a good result there. Saturday. A win, a win would be great. Um, Bashakshir play away at Alanya Spor, so I, I definitely wouldn't mark that down as three points for them because, uh, I, I, you know, Bashakshir are having again, good, yeah. but they're not amazing either. They're not ruthless. Alanya Spor under Sergen have had a revival. Um, <clears throat> Elsewhere in the league, maybe I should mention Gulata today is playing a rescendant Siva Spore. Rescendant. Oh, yeah. They're coming be, back. Uh, Fener is playing Antalya Spore. Antalya Spore is one of those teams that's level with us on 26 points, although... Mm. Antalya are weird. You know, one week they can be great, and the other week they're, they're other dog shit, but so yeah. we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, definitely, Trabzon hopefully get three points for us, but... Trabzon, I wouldn't oh, be surprised that's a, that's if a local, we... That's a derby of sorts, isn't it? Yeah, Trabzon derby, Reza. and that's that's, that's going to be, uh, you know, Riza really blamed them for going down two years ago. And so they're that's on gonna the bottom again, looking up. Ay, that's tough. Yeah. Ankara yeah. Guju has good tapping. That's too uh, nice. They just they just sacked our coach, Ankara Guju. Ooh, good, good move. Do you know why? Really... Do you know why they sacked him? Why? After the match, they lost 4-0, and he basically said, well, you know, what do you expect? The club doesn't pay our players. Ooh. <laughs> and he sick. basically got... But, I mean, you know, I'm, I've never been a fan of him. I think he's not a very good coach, but uh, speaking the truth, so kudos to him, to Ismail Kartal there. Yeah. Um, now, then? But, yeah. I mean, I, wish, I you, honestly, I wish Shinobi Nish would sometimes... Sometimes I just wish, like, on one side, I'm like, yeah, no, I mean, it's going to destabilize, it's going to co- cause chaos, but sometimes I wish he'd just speak the truth. Because I, the thing, you know, no matter how much we've criticized Gunesh uh, and, and, you know, or criticized his shortcomings, and uh, in fact, there's a couple more points that I wanted to make and I forgot to make, actually, but I'll, I'll save it for a later podcast. But um, no matter how much we've criticized him in recent weeks, months, um, I do have to say that he so often gets used as a scapegoat oh, yeah. by the board. Um, and, you know, just one of those things is that one someone told me the other day from... For me, the main responsible is the are the board because they failed. You know, they basically completely bet this summer on transfers, um, and they're not wrong because I think both Karius and Lige were great transfers, but they came in for two good players that 
we needed didn't replacing. Need to lose in the first place. And then, but then we didn't replace anyone else that departed. Yeah. Um, and we didn't bring in any and, of the, the, the depth. And we didn't. And we didn't bring any strengthening. I mean, so you know, that's a major failure on the board's part. Yeah. And again, um, like, just like Chanel, like Chanel could do a better job of covering his own by uh, mm. being transparent about this these scenarios. I think the board also could be covering themselves way better by being transparent. And if they'd said, guys, this situation's crazy. Like, it, and mm. I think one of the problems here is a general inability by Turkish people to point the finger at, like, why is the economy doing, you know that's, what I mean? Like, that, yeah, there's, that's the most important thing. If they would be transparent, they, there, there wouldn't be all these rumors. There wouldn't all be all this, oh, you know, they're, they're taking commissions on transfers and they're filling their own pockets and all that kind of stuff. If you just respond to that, I mean, if it's true, okay, I, I, <laughs> then I guess you, you know, you're not going to say <laughs> it. But, you know, if it's not true, then make then, then start being more transparent about stuff like that. And one of those things that I think, you know, we, the board did fail on the transfer tar, on the transfer front. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I see coaches do a lot more with a lot less. You know, look at Antalya Spor, look at Malatya Spor. Does, does Malatya Spor have a great striker? Yeah, how are I mean, they more points than us? <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's not like they have more, you know, that kind of stuff. So to me, tactically, Shinal Gunish is failing because every week we say, well, you know, well, we have said it multiple times, like what's what's one of our main issues is quality, lack of quality, Here's right? Here's a better question, right? But I think, if Yeni Malatyaspor had most of a Pactamek, is there any way he wouldn't be starting for them? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we can't blame the fact no. that we have to play most of a <laughs> the thing, The thing is, what I am most bothered by with this whole thing is that Shinon Gunesh relies way too much on individual player quality. The only reason we got 41 points in the second half of the season last year is because Anderson Talishka suddenly started kicking in the higher gear and started scoring almost every game and won us loads of points. It's not like we were suddenly playing so much better than we were the first half of the season. It's just that we, you know, Gunesh kind of got his... his Tactical ineptitude at some... Well, I don't want him to call it ineptitude, but his ability or, or, or lack of ability to turn things around and get the team to play proper football again was kind of masked by Ryan Babel and, and, and Talishka coming up big at, at some point, at, you know, and g getting us lots of points with their individual performances. And that's what we've been lacking this season is that yeah. individual that stands out and, and gets us those goals. I mean, I love... Adam Laich, I think Adam Laich is gonna work a lot better in a well-oiled machine kind of team than Talishka would. But I, I have no doubts in my mind that if we still had Talishka right now, we'd have more points yeah. because he'd he well, we wouldn't have to deal with this period of like Liaich settling, right? Like just the last yeah, few but, games, he's really started to assert himself. And then too bad he had to slip up in this last one, but he's really started to assert himself as being that kind of dominant yeah. player. I think as a footballer, Leic is an improvement over Talishka, but Talishka would have gotten us more goals, yeah, uh, in, need, and, and he would have got and he would have gotten us points because just because that's the type of player he is. Um, I think in a like I said, like if 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 your team is if you have a good team, I think you're gonna get more you're gonna get more out of Leic and you're gonna get out of Talishka. Yeah. But Talishka, if you're kind of lacking a little bit, he's gonna drag you across the finish line more easily than than is. Oh, yeah. um, and that's the type that's the type of thing that I kind of blame Shannon Gunesh for is he, we shouldn't be relying on individual quality like that. Now, when when he there took out Guven Yalchin for Mustafa Pektimek, you were right to say that Guven has been playing well. But I was concerned that he wasn't doing anything tactical. He wasn't putting in a second striker. He was just doing a swap. Mm. Because, you know, like, you're just basically yeah. hoping for some... Because you know Mustafa Pektimek isn't the player who's individually going to bring you up another notch. You're hoping for some yeah. kind of weird miracle where he does something, you know? And he did and it. he did it, you know? <laughs> and, and so, in a way, I was kind of like, damn it. Like, because that's exactly the kind of nonsense that he gets rewarded for where he shouldn't really. Because, like, we know Pektimek isn't this type of person who you can just, yeah. you know, hope for he a miracle got, with. But he, there, he there got he bailed out, basically. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, and I, I do have to say in the second half, I, I do, I definitely think we deserve to get that yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean every the cross attitude. that Gunnar put in was like an inch away from somebody sliding it in. You know, it was, it was getting a little annoying, honestly, because 
Uh, yeah, plus our goalkeeper had a great game as well. I yeah. mean, he made some really big saves. And if it wasn't for Urujan, we probably would have still won this game. Um, but it, it, it gives me some hope going into the second half of the season. But obviously, lots of stuff needs Wait, to happen. Yeah, we hold need on, to... Khan, because we do have <sighs> that, one more match. Yeah. One more time, I'm going to say it. Yeah. December 22nd, yeah. 11 a.m. here, 7 p.m. Or, yeah, 7 p.m. in Turkey, 5 p.m. for UConn. Everybody, tune in. Yeah. This is it. This is a big one. And this is really, I think, this is the match that's going to say, okay, we are X amount of points. We, we have a chance. Like, we're going to commit some funds. We're going to do something here. Or <laughs> not. And we're going to tear everything down. So be prepared <laughs> for, for the aftermath of this upcoming match. Yeah. And stay tuned to the Black Eagles podcast. Because as always, we're going to cut it all up and dissect it and analyze it and tell you everything you need to think about it <laughs> sure and hopefully hopefully if we get them we get those three points but let's uh, let's, let's end it here um for those of you who are in uh, the netherlands or in belgium or just people who speak dutch uh, on friday i'll be on i'll be in studio for fc afkikens uh, christmas special i'm not sure if i'll be on the show or anything i i guess i probably will be um, so if everything goes well, I'll be in Amsterdam on, on Friday and uh, be in studio with those guys. Uh, I think uh, they well, you can watch them on YouTube or on Fox Sports. So that's uh, nice. so give it a look if you want. Um, so otherwise, uh, check the um, the podcast notes for anything social media related. Where to follow us on Twitter, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I don't really have anything more to add. I think we spoke. At length. More than enough. Yeah, today. exactly. Yeah, we covered everything. Definitely did. So, uh, Sinan, take us out. Go, Go back, back to the Everyone, this is it. This is seriously it. Like, we have one man. I feel we have to make a decision one way or another, and the board is on the clock. One way or another. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna get to the TV ticket your one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, I think we've done the I think I uh, well, I, I seem to I think I do that quite often. I just like seeing a song like I'm back in the Besiktas International hopes you enjoyed this program.